Hi, Dave and Beth Nicodemus here from Beyond the Walls Community Church. We are here with our virtual Bible series, video number two on messy spirituality. This week we take a look at chapter one of messy spirituality. Last week in our video we looked at the introduction. Uh, this week chapter one is all about what is messy spirituality. And the author Mike Iaconelli, uh, he writes about his own messy spirituality. Uh, he talks about how even though he's a lay pastor, uh, he is a uh, Christian worker, um, uh, working with youth workers, a uh, highly respected Christian leader, when he thinks about his own faith and following Christ and how he wants to be this perfect follower of Christ, he says, I'm a mess. I don't measure up. And one of the examples he gives in the book that really uh, stood out to, to me was he talks about envisioning this moment uh, where he's, he's kind of in the crowd that's uh, all, all around Jesus. And suddenly Jesus, without warning, turns and looks right at him and says, follow me. And so Mike just imagines himself running towards Jesus full tilt. And then Jesus kind of holds up his hand and says, stop. No, I didn't mean you. I meant the person behind you. And that's how he feels. He feels in fear. He feels like a mess. And I completely understand that uh, because even after 13 years of full-time uh, ministry in a couple different churches, I look at my own life and I honestly say more times than not, this is a mess. Uh, I'm, I'm not any better than anyone else. Uh, and that's exactly what he's talking about in this chapter. We love how Mike defines spirituality. It's kind of a fresh take on it and it's a refreshing take on it. Here's what the book has to say and his definition. Accepting the reality of our broken, flawed lives is the beginning of spirituality. Not because the spiritual life will remove our flaws, but because we let go of seeking perfection and instead seek God, the one who is present in the tangledness of our lives. Spirituality is not about being fixed. It is about God's, God's being present in the mess of our unfixedness. And we just really resonated with that, I think, especially as a type A perfectionism kind of person. Um, that whole concept that I don't, I don't have to be perfect to be spiritual. Spirituality is not about my perfectness. It's about my flawedness. And it's, I'm never going to be fixed, but it's about serving Jesus and being in a relationship with him, realizing my human state. And we often, we think about, you know, the heroes of faith throughout scripture, throughout the Old and New Testament. And we kind of think, well, I could never measure up. Um, you know, these are people with just this unshakable faith. But then as you start to look at uh, different figures from, 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 from scripture, and Mike Iaconelli points this out, you see there's actually a lot of mess in there. Uh, one of the uh, characters he mentions is Noah. Uh, you know, we know Noah built the ark and uh, here he is, this man of faith, uh, you know, surrounded by evil and all these uh, horrible things happening and God's going to restart humanity with his family. And after the ark lands and the rainbow and, and the covenant is made, what does Noah do? Well, he gets drunk, he passes out, and he's naked. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mike Iaconelli's like, yeah, they don't usually teach you that story in Sunday school. Uh, but it's part of the messiness, the rawness of even these heroes of faith. And he goes on to talk about other people in the Bible and even mentions Jesus' own disciples. They're a group of messes. Uh, yeah, they do some incredible things, but they often are making a mess. And it's a bit refreshing to know that even our heroes of faith, the people that we look at, in history, throughout scripture, and we say, wow, what followers of God, what followers of Christ? Well, actually, they were a mess too. One of our, one of my favorite stories in this chapter is, is towards the end, and it's a, a story, a true story by um, a woman named Anne Lamott. Uh, she actually wrote a book, Traveling Mercies, and she shares her story of how Jesus came into her life in a really, really hard time. She was um, addicted to drugs and alcohol. She had just had an abortion um, and was probably one of the most, he, as he says, um, one of the most unlikely to be improbable candidates for spirituality he could imagine. Her story is that uh, she um, was hurting and in pain. She had just had an abortion. And while she was still bleeding from that abortion, had gone to church 
hungover <laughs> and um, trying to, to get rid of the pain that she just kind of seemed to get rid of. And she tells a story of how Jesus met her in her room. She felt his presence. And finally, um, one day she said, I quit. She wanted to push Jesus away, but at this point she said, I quit. You can come in and be a part of my life. And so we just love that story of conversion, of, of how no matter what we're dealing with, and certainly the things that we deal with, our, our hurts and our um, wounds, that, that Jesus wants to heal those, and it's our messiness that qualifies us to serve him. I guess one of the strongest points to be made for this chapter and throughout this entire book is you don't have to be perfect to follow Jesus. Instead, we go to our perfect Savior with our mess, and he accepts it. I want to leave a discussion question for you as we finish up. And it says, Mike claims that messy spirituality unveil, unveils the myth of flawlessness and calls Christians everywhere to come out of hiding and stop pretending. How has a spirituality of perfection impacted your own Christian faith? Where do you notice hiding and pretending within the church? Where do you notice them within your own life with God? In closing, I wanna share with you a short prayer that Mike Iaconelli gave us. Jesus, I'm a mess. I'm not the person I long to be. Help me to be honest about my shortcomings as well as my gifts and to seek your presence within all that I am. Amen. All right, well, that's chapter one. We'll see you next week for chapter two. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.